Hi all, this is a follow-up to my last clip about the System76 Lima laptop that I got uh, what, about last week or so and um, I've been able to set up all my a basic development um, installed within Ubuntu and I partitioned the 256 gig uh, NVMe M2 SSD into three 20 gigabyte partitions and I set them all up as <coughs> boot volumes and I also set up Arch Linux on one of those uh, bootable partitions and I will cut right off of this through to the process of where I <coughs> set up Arch Linux on the laptop but I'm going to throw in a spanner into the works because I no longer have the Lima Ooh. so a buddy of mine was heading back to the States in fact, it's the same buddy who brought me my Nespresso. Um, <clears throat> he travels rather frequently and uh, he very kindly offered to take the Lima and ship it back within the 30-day um, refund period, essentially. And <clears throat> it f I f well, the initial impression of the unit was not too bad but having used it <clears throat> I started to notice some issues that made me rethink my decision first off it's so light it's entirely plastic the body um, my initial thought was to get something that's portable and small and similar to the same conundrum one ends up with the travel tripod I end up in the similar ditch with the Lima the body is so plastic it's extremely light and that's a plus but it's also negative because it's light in a cheap way it doesn't have that solid um, oozing quality feel of my macbook pro um, then the second major issue was the keyboard has a serious amount of flex so when you're typing you can feel the keys are essentially just giving way to the motion of typing the <clears throat> in addition to that there is no caps lock indicator as in there's no LED and furthermore there is no it's not a backlit keyboard and then the these issues went on to the trackpad not so great the trackpad has the left and right clickable button and those are horrid absolutely horrid and I'm more of the sort that likes to click a physical button rather than tapping the touch surface. But, but <clears throat> honestly, even on, on the Mac, the new trackpad on the Mac laptops is incredible. There is no physical button as such. You just essentially, the trackpad is the button. Um, you don't get any of that in the lever. And the, a, minor, a minor issue is the SD card slot on the Lima does not support SD cards <coughs> over 16 gigs <coughs> apologies I got a cough um, that just suddenly said just started uh, setting in today um, so I tried my 64 gig SanDisk SD cards it just wouldn't detect um, the commands such as ls blk ls block just does not show it, it didn't come up at all so I contacted System76 and they confirmed that it's an issue with um, the Lima itself. Um, so they suggested that I consider their higher end models such as the Oryx or the Serval WS but neither one is available. <coughs> New models are coming out. The pricing configurators cannot be accessed on the website. So I basically sent it back for a complete refund. And well that left me with reconsidering my actions in terms of ordering the Lima and I thought look <clears throat> I want something for the portability aspect is something that I've rethought and it's not something that's a priority because <clears throat> having compared 
Ubuntu, Unity, and the Lima experience, the Mac experience is still way above there. It's not something I'm going to consider for a while for my primary mobile workstation. But I want to have a system in my office that's that can play the role of a Linux server and there's a caveat there and something that can boot Windows which by the way for the last 15 years I haven't used Windows um, and the reason I'm talking about Windows is purely to work as a gaming machine why not? If it has the power and the dual purpose why not? and the caveat I talked about um, of it running as a server it's I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm breaking that rule because of the configuration I've gone for for a server class machine technically you need to have redundant power supplies and certain redundancies internally um, storage needs to be RAID etc etc but more importantly your memory has to be of the type that's called ECC error correction that can support error correction <clears throat> and typically the CPUs that support ECC are the, the Intel Xeon processors um, and you need to have a compatible mainboard and the one I've gone for does not support either and that's fine because what I've gone for is primarily a, a desktop that could run certain tasks in a server type fashion but those tasks are not mission critical anything mission critical would most likely be offloaded into the cloud say a digital ocean droplet or if it's really critical I'll put it onto the AWS stack so looking at those points and the fact that I want to be a gaming rig as well I've gone for something that's relatively high-end but it's not really over the top so what do, what do I mean by high-end and not over the top it cost more than two thousand five hundred dollars but it did it cost less than five thousand dollars the five thousand mark is when you're going for these crazy over the top gaming rigs and that's not what I'm aiming for so it's oh it's high end slight but a bit more pragmatic a bit more practical and so the system I've essentially gone for is an i7 6850k based setup the main board is the Asus Sabertooth Tough X99 LGA 2011-3 supporting mainboard. Um, it supports DDR4, um, and I've gone for uh, Zotac um, GE Force GTX 1080. Just a single card. I haven't gone for SLI setup, and I've gone for a 256 gig uh, M2 NVMe. SSD card, which is basically the size of like a tiny little, the tiny little card this much that basically goes in laptops, but now it's come over to the server, to the desktop environment, and it connects to the PCI E 16x bus, and its speeds are like 2,000 megabytes per second, um, sequential speeds, and. <coughs> In addition, a 512 gig um, SSD, which is the a normal variant of SSDs, it's uh, something around 600 to uh, 700 megabytes per second. The usual flare, uh, affair. Um, no optical drive, um, no sound card. Which I'll most likely go for a, a, D, a DAC, essentially down the road. And um, oh, and it's going to it's going to have a, what's called an AIO all-in-one water cooling setup um, the water cooler is by Corsair the power supply is Corsair the case is also a Corsair case so three things from Corsair 
Um, the memory is crucial, ballistics, um, and it's at the moment uh, a 16 gig kit, so just two DIMMs essentially. Um, and this stuff is already on the way. Um, it's actually left London today, um, and it'll arrive in Sri Lanka tomorrow, um, all the way from DNH again. It's pretty incredible what what can be ordered um, within the, a click of a few mount, uh, mouse buttons essentially. Um, this stuff is up and away on its way to my home. So, but now the next issue is given the high value. Being a third world country, anything over hundred dollars is considered high value. So, you can imagine the trouble I'm going to go through to say, I just ordered some of this two thousand five hundred dollars worth of computer hardware. But the good news is all that's it's the duty value is zero percent on computer equipment. But I will get hit with things like uh, port and the airport, something levy, um, and some s minor small charges, but considering the value, um, it may end up being a $200, $300 bill um, that I would have to pay to DHO, but let's see, fingers crossed. Um, so that's going to be sorted out tomorrow. Hi guys, this is a really quick update. Um, so I've basically got my new lemur system 76 laptop set up exactly how i like it um, i do haven't done much i've essentially um made some changes to the way the grub config is set up i've added all my ssh keys i've um i modified a few things with system d um, I first disabled the auto login and auto boot into the Unity GUI basically. I killed it off, but then I liked the way it looks actually. So, and since it's a desktop, it's not really a server environment, so I don't really need to stay stuck in a TTY itself. So, um, I re enabled it. Um, and I've uh, flashed the Arch Linux live I ISO image basically onto a USB stick and right now what you can see is it's grabbing all the base libraries and the development libraries for Arch Linux and these are basically being fetched off the net and it's pretty quick, you can see the speeds I'm getting at the moment. Um, it's going fairly quick. So this should take, I would say, under 10 minutes or so, um, the way it's going. And it's uh, basically strapping the the absolute very base of Arch Linux. This should be a pretty sweet bare bones install. And. Um, could be interesting to see this, the footprint of a really of a bare bones Arch Linux install. Um, and getting it on to Wi Fi was really simple. Um, just a Wi Fi dash menu was the command. I used uh, Parted, which is a command line version of Gparted, to essentially set the partition I made. Um, as bootable um, and so this this box has uh, let me try and actually put it up on me on my other on my Mac um, the configuration of this machine um, just give me a second I'm just grabbing my account details up um, and I don't want to basically announce my shipping details to the world so let me just scroll it down here we go so you'll basically see the price and how much I paid for it and all that so that's all right um, so here we go this is my iMac 5k 
and um, you can see the specs so this came to uh, under $1,200 but once it got sent from Colorado to Canada I had to pay about 200 Canadian for the ta for tax taxes and stuff so it comes to all in all around 1,335 US dollars or something and what we get with this lemur at least it's a 14 inch um, IPS LED backlit display onboard Intel graphics uh, 2.3 gigahertz i3 two cores I noticed it has two, two cores and four yeah so that's there um, I went to the maximum um, memory 16 gigs um, and it has and I also picked the fastest SSD um, like look at that 1200 megabytes per second right that's awesome I could have put a second drive I didn't and I went for the faster Wi-Fi so it's probably the uh, AC version and uh, all the other bits and oh yeah it's done so that was really quick how long did it take it took yeah under six minutes so that's quite nice um, so I'm going to continue with the install basically now I can configure some of the very base stuff um, I can shoot into the partition and set stuff up which I will do in a moment all right well I will post another clip uh, as I make progress um, give me a like subscribe tell me what you think and uh, we'll pick up on this uh, in a couple of days time see you cheers bye